Shove It Squad. It's a Patreon special today, so keep your mouth shut and your feathers folded. It's Trevor Murdoch's TNA run. Thank you to Jonathan Burr for requesting this video. Match 1, Team 3D Tag Team Invitational Tournament. Accompanied by Sheikh Abdul-Bashir and Kyoshi, it's Naito and Yujiro. No limit. Who forgot these guys existed? And they'll be taking on the team of outlaw Jeffro Holiday, whose past as stand-up or Trevor Murdoch is not mentioned. And he's teaming with Showtime Eric Young. EY starts out the match, but it doesn't take long for Jeffro to get involved. He hits a snap mirror and a straight up boot to the face. He follows that up with an elbow drop and he gets a two count. Yujiro manages to get back on his feet, but he's immediately crushed as Jeffro hits a full Nelson slam. Love that move. Somehow he only gets a two. Yujiro jabs his fingers in the eyelids of Jeffro and he manages to escape. Moments later, Yujiro takes out Jeffro of a drop kick and they've turned it around. Naito hits a back body drop for a two count. Low Limit continue double teaming, but they do make a mistake and Jeffro blocks the dive from the top with his size sixes. Jeffro tags Eric in and they try to work a double team move, but the World Elite faction on the outside causes a distraction with the numbers advantage. Yujiro hits a slam on Jeffro, but the interference backfires and Eric Young puts away No Limit. A win on Jeffro's debut, and his team will advance to the next round. I quite liked some of the moves he did, it's a C. Before the next match, the new Dream Team cut a promo about their win last week. Eric Young's almost a heel at this point, but it's before his World Elite run. Jeffrey has a chance to speak, but <laughs> instead, for some reason, he sneezes on the generic blonde interviewer chick. Match 2, Team 3D semi-final tag team tournament match. The Dudleys come out to watch. It's James Storm and Bobby Roode, Beer Money, versus Eric Young and Jeffrey Holiday. Jeffrey doesn't even have his own music. I'm not sure why they brought him in, to be honest. Eric Young gets completely destroyed by the Beer Boys. Jeffrey literally doesn't even get into the match for five minutes. Eric Young finally does make the tag and he bashes the beer boys. He hits an atomic drop on Storm and then dodges the Rude clothesline so that he hits his own partner. He hits a back body drop on Rude and he keeps running and he hits a bulldog on Storm. He gets a two count but it was a lovely hot tag. Rude and Storm get annoyed and they double team Jeffro for a two count of their own. Eric Young makes a blind tag on Jeffro and he takes beer money out with a drop kick. He then hits a leg drop but Jeffro has the referee distracted from counting his partner's own pin. Holiday then almost clotheslines Eric Young and he flips out at him. Storm super kicks Young and then Rude knocks Jeffro off the apron. They hit the DWR on Young and it's over. Jeffro completely cost his own team the match here and I still have no idea what the point was in bringing him in. Is it just to make him look stupid? No way near as good as the last match but I'll give him a D for that fiery hot tag. On the next show Eric Young complains to executive shareholder Mick Foley about his partner last week. Foley replies by saying how dare you badmouth the good name of Jeffro Holiday. Match 3, I quit match. Outlaw, Jeffro Holiday. He looks so miserable, that must be the TNA effect. And he's taken on Booker T. Completely random I quit match. This is just a warm up for when Booker T takes on AJ Styles in a real I quit match. They have a test of strength which Booker wins by punching Jeffro. It looks like it's going to be an easy match for Booker but Jeffro fires up and knocks Booker down. He then sends Booker over the top rope and the T-Man gets the advantage on the outside by dropping Jeffro on the crowd barrier. Booker T asks if he quits and he says, your mama. <laughs> Booker gets back in the ring and kicks him down. Booker follows that up with a suplex and then he hits a backdrop and he brings the referee over again to see if he quits and he still won't do it. Booker starts slapping him but it's still not over. Jeffro fights up from his knees with chops but he's shut down pretty quickly by another Booker kick. Booker wants him to quit again but he still doesn't want to do it so the bookman pounds on him more. The referee asks him again and he says your wife looked good naked. <laughs> I like that they're trying to make this personal and believable there's not enough of that in wrestling. Booker tries to hit him with the scissors kick but Holiday dodges it and hits him with a big boot. Jeffrey pounds on him and asks him if he quits but he says no. Nothing funny about that. Booker jabs him in the eyelid and tries to mount a comeback but Jeffrey turns him inside out with a clothesline. Booker's wife Charmel distracts the referee and Booker gets a chair and wallops Jeffro and then he hits the scissors kick. He gets the referee to check if it's over and this time Jeffro says he's done. Why did they need to distract the referee? Isn't weapon use legal in an I quit match? I know he's just jobbing here but he made the match fun. He's trying to make the best out of a bad situation. I really think he could go somewhere if they put some time and faith into him. It's a C. That's the highest I can go for this one. I neither shove it nor love it. Match 4, Raven's Clockwork Orange House of Fun match. Jeffro Holiday versus Raven, who's accompanied by Dr. Stevie. Holiday immediately hits Raven with a trash can multiple times. Raven climbs into the ring and gets smashed by the Holiday boot. Jeffro pulls down a trash can lid and he knocks Raven down. 
Doctor Stevie interferes on the outside with a kendo stick, and then Raven sends Jeffrey to the outside. Raven uses the Russian leg sweep into the guardrail, and then he gets Stevie's kendo stick from him and he puts it to use. Back in the ring, Raven takes Holiday out of a baking tray. He grabs a steel chair, and he wants to hit his DDT on it, but Holiday wakes up and he blocks his punch with the chair. Holiday sets him upright in the chair, and then he knocks him down with a big knee to the face. Jeffrey continues doing well, and he throws Raven into the fence. He boots Raven again, who's now trapped between the ropes and the cage. Jeffrey tries to charge at him, but Raven suddenly manages to free himself, and the entire side of the cage crashes to the floor. It's over. That was cool, not seen that before. Daphne comes out of a straitjacket, and Raven DDTs Holiday into the chair. They then try to lock Jeffro into the straitjacket, but Abyss makes the save, who's already feuding with Raven. I'll hold my hands up. At the point I made that Raven vs Jeff Jarrett faction video, I forgot about this Raven faction. But it still doesn't matter, because Slapnuts won by a country mile. It's a Marky D video. I have to shove in a Slapnuts reference somewhere. I enjoyed this short, pointless hardcore match. Jeffro Holiday continues to impress me, and makes me want to see more of him. Problem is, I can only grade him on what he's actually done, which ain't much. It's a D. Next up, it's supposed to be Jeffro Holiday vs Jay Lethal, but he doesn't come out. The camera cuts backstage and Lethal Consequences are fighting with the idiot Abyss. Abyss charges out to the ring next, but Jeffro isn't scared of him. I like that they're trying to give his character a bit of backbone, but it's kind of unnecessary because they've not given him anything else. He probably should have been scared of Abyss as well, because he charges out and hits the black hole slam in seconds and then he throws him out the ring. He's gone. He continues to be involved with Abyss as Dr. Stevie puts a bounty on Abyss's head. Any wrestler is able to claim the bounty if they take Abyss out, and Jeffro is the first man to try and collect the money by assaulting Abyss with a steel chair. Match 5, Hard Justice, 2009, no DQ match. Jeffro Holiday accompanied by Dr. Stevie versus Abyss. This is his only pay-per-view match, so I hope you enjoy it. This one starts out as a massive brawl. Jeffro tries to batter Abyss in the corner, but Abyss isn't affected and chops don't work either. Abyss drops him like a bad habit, and then he claps like a seal with happiness. What an idiot. He knocks Jeffro out the ring, but loses the advantage. Jeffro Holiday throws Abyss into the steps, and then he gets back in the ring. He tries to hit the elbow drop, but misses. Abyss batters him in the corner as he tries to protect himself. It looks like a real uneven fight right now. Abyss gets a steel chair, but Stevie gives Holiday a baton, and he bends it by hitting Abyss in his meathead. Jeffro chops Abyss on the apron, and then he charges at the monster and knocks him off of it. Jeffro Holiday gets him back in the ring, but Abyss kicks out at two. He then fetches a chair, but he can't hit the monster with it. Abyss tries to hit a choke slam, but Holiday fights that off, so Abyss gives him the big boot. Abyss now mounts some offense with a bat body drop and a charge in the corner. The monster hits a side slam on Jeffro for a two count. He puts the chair on Holiday and tries to splash on top of it, but Jeffro gets the chair up well in advance, and Abyss falls on his slash zone. It looks stupid. Jeffro gets the bat on again, and he smacks Abyss in the head and does a weird pose, but he can only get a two count. Jeffro sandwiches a chair in the corner, and he tries to throw the monster into it, but it doesn't go well for him, and Abyss throws him headfirst into it. The monster nails him with the choke slam, and it's over. Wait, no it's not, Jeffro kicks out. Dr. Stevie distracts Abyss on the outside, and Jeffro hits a big time bulldog, but Abyss doesn't seem to be that damaged as he gets up seconds later. Holiday gets the brass knuckles, but Abyss scoops him up and nails the black hole slam for the free. I don't think this really needed to be on pay-per-view, but it was the longest match we've had on the show at this point, and it was enjoyable. Stevie's lecturing Holiday after the match, so he delivers a massive hook and the crowd go nuts. Even Abyss claps for it. I give it a C. I just wish we could give this guy something more meaningful to do. Match 6, Jeffro Holiday, who doesn't even get an entrance, he's just been shoved in the ring. And he's taken on Bobby Lashley. This is during his first TNA run, so nobody liked him at this point. This is actually Lashley's first singles match on Impact. Lashley takes Holiday down straight away and then he pounds on him. Bobby Lashley smacks him in the corner and Jeffro only manages one punch to the gut. Lashley throws him across the ring with a bat body drop. Bobby then picks him up across his shoulders like he's nothing and delivers a bat breaker. He tries to hit a spear in the corner, but Holiday blocks it. Jeffro charges at him, but Lashley dodges it and hits him with a full Nelson slam. That's how it's done. That made Jeffro's one earlier in this video look terrible. Lashley scoops him up and makes him tap in seconds with the Dragon Sleeper. It's over. It was never really Job in doubt, was it? Man. It's an S, I'm afraid. He's the definition of a jobber right here. And I know that's supposed to be his role in this match, but he didn't manage to do anything other than a slap to the gut. And that's it, folks. A strange short run with a random pay-per-view match. 
This whole thing was forgettable and I expect most of you have also forgotten it. It would have been a C, but the last match dragged it down to a high D. As I said several times, I wish they could have given him something more to do. He looks pretty slick in the ring and he tried to make everything meaningful. So I guess from now it's Jeffro Jobber Day. <laughs>